In this second video we're going to talk about removing the tips of the nails that are through the plywood holding our shingles on but are in the way for us to sister a new piece of wood alongside this broken old one. They need to be planed off flush. We don't push them through because that will damage the shingles on the top and maybe cause a leak. So what we need to do is we need to trim them off. There's several ways to do it. You can use a hacksaw blade and if you only have a couple to do it's it's tolerable. I did about four of them in five minutes. It takes a little while because you have to hold it up against against the wood. You have to take the blade out to do that. When you have a lot to do there's two other tools that I ended up using. This is an orbital tool here. Uh, this one's a Canadian tire brand and this this is really excellent for getting in super close, trimming something off. If you need to notch out or remove a piece of wood that's completely broken, you can do that. Or if this top cord is actually deflected down, and look at this, that's not holding very much. If there's a nail here, and we actually restore this, this top cord, I don't want to push on the nail, so I can actually use this to trim off that nail so that there's nothing in between that and the plywood anymore. If you're going to use one of these, one of these saws, and um, there's a bunch of different blades, and there's actually a YouTube video where they compared about six different types. I didn't believe the hype. Um, I tried using the original uh, bimetal blade that came with this. Nails are actually pretty hard to uh, pretty hard on your saw blade. Um, this one here is a little bit beat up, so I ended up following the recommendations of the YouTube video, and and I ended up buying the Dremel Multimax MM482. So that's the MM482. Let's see if you can get some numbers off of that. Um, it does last about three times longer than the cheap ones. Not cheap. So because it's so expensive, I only use this for the special cases where I really need to get in and reach something. For the majority of the rest of it, I used a hand grinder. <coughs> And fitted in this, I took out the stone. This is, there's my spare one, this is the Diablo cutoff blade. And this works really, really well for removing the bottom part of these nails so I can get the wood up in there. You have to be very careful when you use this. This is probably the most dangerous thing I have that plugs in up here. Uh, grinders are notorious for hurting people, and the attic is a lousy place to be using it. So we're going to have a whole video on safety. Um, you really need to plan what you're going to do with this. Do exactly the repair, turn it off, and set it down before you start moving around. This is a hazardous spot to have this running, holding in your hand. So I'm going to use this right now and take off one of these nails. I don't take it off all the way with this. I go about halfway, two-thirds of the way through, and then I stop. That leaves the tip still up here because it's kind of hot and I don't want it to drop through the insulation and poke a hole in my vapor barrier. Um, so I use a pair of pliers to just twist the last little bit off. But first, we'll, we'll run this and show you how that goes. The second hazard with using this is when you're cutting steel with it, like a nail, it causes a lot of sparks. And we're up here in a very dry, tinder dry, attic made out of wood. So that's a bit of a scary spot. So I've got two things on hand. I've got a spray bottle with regular water in it and I've got a fire extinguisher in case I need to bring out the big equipment to handle anything. Haven't had any fires yet but when you're using this you're so close to the wood you're going to be generating some hot sawdust as well as sparks. So that could cause a fire if you're not careful. I always do this type of work as soon as I get into the attic for the day so that I'm working in the attic for the next couple of hours so if anything did manage to start a fire even a couple hours from now I'll be nearby. I don't do grinding and then go downstairs because I won't be able to see what's happening. Very careful with this. You're actually going to be holding it upside down while you're trimming off these nails. So let me give you a little bit better angle. So plan what you're going to do I'm fixed. I'm not going to be moving around the attic once I get this going. There we go. 
I set it down and I let it stop moving before I continue working because it's a very dangerous item. So now I'm just going to use my needle on those pliers and snap those off. One there and one there. If you didn't grind enough and you find you're really having to work that nail with the pliers to get it off, that's a bad thing. You don't want to be pushing that hot nail up through your shingle. So make sure you do enough to take it off and then you can trim the end of it off. So there we go. We've now had, I've already done this. I've got all the nails out of the way. The next video I'm going to talk about getting the wood in place, finding its position and drilling pilot holes because this wood is so old and so dry it's very brittle. And if you start driving the construction screws into this in order to clamp the new wood to the old wood, it's actually going to splinter on the inside and you're losing strength. So we're going to be drilling a pilot hole with this in the next video.